How to add an image to a SharePoint list image column with a Power Automate flow. In this example, I'm gonna use a receipt scanner app I just built. I'm gonna take a picture of a receipt. We're gonna store the receipt info in a SharePoint list and the image column in the SharePoint list is going to receive a picture of the receipt. So I'm gonna hit scan receipt, camera. Got my receipt right here. Taking a picture, hitting okay. Gonna let my app load it. Okay, the app has loaded. So now I'm going to hit submit. So when I hit submit, the Power Automate flow starts running in the background. And that is where it is adding a copy of this picture to the SharePoint list image column. All right, so here we've got a little review screen. I'm gonna clean up a little bit. We can do some edits here. I like everything, so hit an update. That looks good. It got an Italian hero sub for 398. That's good, I'm gonna hit next my last review page. So that's all done. So now let's go look at the flow. Okay, the first thing is we need to talk about how we send this image data to Power Automate from the back end of Power Apps. So I've got that image loaded here in the back end of the Power App. And I have this image data control. It's actually a text label and it's set to invisible. But if we make it visible, we can see, you can see that it's full of this hash of data that is actually the content um, of our image. We pull that in just by putting receipt processor one, the name of our receipt control dot original image, and it pulls it all in here. And basically when we hit submit, we are sending, we're passing information off to a flow. And that right here is this power app to receipt data dot run. And we are sending, um, we're sending a, a JSON object that has all the information from the different fields that were detected and it also sends this image data dot text so it's sending the text from that image data control with it so that's how we are passing the raw data of the image to the power automate flow and so this is the power automate this is the flow this is the flow that just ran when we tested that image out so here we get the trigger from power apps here is um, a little composed data that just takes the the image, the raw image data, and it comes into here. And if you click download, you can open it up here. And so this is the raw data of that image. It's very long. Um, we don't need all of this. So it kind of comes in this JSON packet. Um, we, we don't need the first key value pair and we don't need all, we need to like remove like one thing at the very end of this string here so you can there are various websites you can look up to see why that needs to be done um so anyway we have to parse that a little bit actually i think i started a bit early i think it's all this stuff that you need to use so we get that data and then down here is where i run some some express i have this kind of complicated expression that we'll take a look at here in a second where we kind of configure or process that data, we parse it and process it into base64 binary that we can use to create the image file. So here's where we create the file. We just put it, we create it in SharePoint. So we just take that raw data that we formatted correctly and we create a file name for it based on information that comes from the, the, um, the fields that were detected from the scan of the receipt processing app. So now we'll go look at how this is set up. Here we are on the edit side. So this is, uh, we just received that, that image data string directly right here. And then down here is where we can, we format it properly. So we've got this expression. It's several steps are kind of nested together. So I will just, I'll copy this and we'll look at it in brackets. So I just put it in brackets here. So it's a little easier to look at. So here's the, the final step is the base64 to binary. Um, we start off here with that, with that raw image data string. We are splitting it by the comma. We are taking the last item that we get, the last item in the array that we create by splitting by a comma. Then we are splitting it again by a quote mark, double quote mark, and we are taking the first. That's because at the end, the end of that hash, there's a quote mark that we can't have. We have to get rid of that. So, I mean, you could just replace the quote mark with a null, but this is how I did it. 
And then we just take all of that and we convert it base64 to binary. Then right here, we are just dumping that base64 to binary image uh, composition. We are just dumping the output of that right into the file content of our SharePoint create a file. So that's how we create the file in SharePoint. Now, however, we need to we need to plug that file, that image, the URL to this, basically. We need to plug that into the image column on the SharePoint list item. Now, unfortunately, hopefully this gets corrected in the future, but unfortunately, when you create a SharePoint list item, which is this step right here, um, you've got all these columns, but a column does not show up for the photo column. So I've got this image column in there called receipt image, but if you notice, there's no... There's no field here called receipt image, but I'll prove to you that there is a receipt image column. Here is our receipts list in SharePoint, and this is the receipt image column. So there it is, and we've got our receipts in it. And that was, it took a lot to figure out how to do this, and that's why I'm making this video, so I can help other people perhaps. Um, so you've got this column, and it is set up as an image column. We'll just look at it here, see it's a type of image but you can't access that directly in the Power Automate. So the trick is you need to use this send an HTTP request to SharePoint, this action. So you just add this action in here and then you tell it your site address, you tell it you want to post because we're editing, we're editing the item. So this is after you create you have to do this after you create the item and after you create your photo file in SharePoint. And then the URI is going to be um, this part's standard API web list, get by title, parentheses, and then you need your list name in single quotes. So it's uh, single quote receipts list, single quote parentheses, forward slash items and we need to tell it to get a specific item so we put our id in there and that id is pulling directly from this right here where we where we created the id that's in parentheses as well and then we put this thing at the end forward slash validate update list item and then down here we have to put something in for the headers and this is what we put in content type application slash json semicolon o data equals verbose or you could type it in like this. Now for the body, this is the important part. So this is the basic structure of the body for this for this um, action, uh, for this post. We have, um, it's a JSON object, and then we've got the first key is called form values. And you gotta, you gotta put it in camel format here, lowercase form, uppercase values or uppercase VE values. And then you do an array. And so you can do more than if you wanted to do these in bulk, you could do it that you could bulk them. Um, but here we're just doing one. And then we've got this one JSON inside that array. And it has a field name. And so it has to be a capital F and capital N. And the field name is going to be the name of your column. And we just looked at it. It's receipt image. That's the name of the column. And then the field value has to be something else. We'll take a look at that here in a second. We, we build it earlier and then we dump it in here. So that is how you, this, this is a step right here who, that puts the image in that column. And up until this step, there is no image in that column. So now we're going to look at that variable that we, that we build um, to update this. All right, this is the variable where we build. It's a string. Now it's it's kind of funny. It, technically, it's like a JSON object, but it's in string format, so it's got to have all these backslashes and stuff in there. Um, perhaps there's a way you could do it where you build the JSON object and you convert it to a string somehow. I couldn't really get anything like that to work, so I just did it this way. So I kind of put the string out here the way it needs to be, and then dynamically populate the stuff that needs to change. So. What needs to change is the file name. So we just pull the file name directly from our SharePoint create, create the image file. So this is the SharePoint action right up here where we create the file. So we're pulling the file name, we're pulling the name from that. Okay, and then we do a backslash 
quote to end that value line. And then down here where we have the relative URL, um, it's going to be forward slash sites, forward slash receipts. That would change based on what your how you've got yours set up. So I've got this folder called receipts, um, you know, and that's where the the list, that's where I'm storing the files, the images. So if you didn't have that, you could get rid of that. If you had it, a couple more folders, you know, you'd have to add those in there. So you could come up with a way to dynamically do that as well. The path, I just pull the path directly from, again, that create, create a file. So I'm just pulling the path from there. And then we do a backslash quote to end that value line. And then down for the ID, we need to pull the ID from the file that's created. However, when you, and it's the E tag is what we're pulling. However, when you get an E tag from this file, it's not in the right format. Let's take a look at it now. All right, so this is where we created the file. And if we scroll down to the bottom of this, you see that um, we get this E tag right here. And what we need is just the GUID that's in here. We don't want anything else. So we just have to extract that. We have to parse that out of there. So there's, you know, you could do it any number of ways. <clears throat> the way I do it is I split it by the comma, take the first one. Actually, no, excuse me. The way I do it is I split it by, <clears throat> I split it by the end bracket and I take the first item out of the array. And then I split it by the front bracket and take the last item of the array. Um, so it's kind of a nested operation, and you end up with that. So we can kind of look at that right here. If we hover over this expression. So last, split, first, split. The outputs, um, the E tag there, and then comma. We're splitting by the end bracket. Um, parentheses, parentheses, comma. Splitting by the front bracket, parentheses, parentheses, to close it off. So that's how we extract that ID. And so you you end up with this stringified version of a JSON object. And then you just plug that, you plug that right into your, you just plug that right in here as the value for field value. And that is how you add the image to, that's how you add the image. So if you were to make that into a JSON, it would look, um, it would look like this right here. In this compose, I've just kind of, compose one right here that um, is how it would look as a JSON object. So, you know, you're basically, you're just giving it the info it needs to make that thumbnail in that column. So it needs to know it's a type of thumbnail. It needs to know it's got a file name and that's the file name. It needs to, it's got this right here. Um, it's got the uh, field name. So that's the name of the column. It's got the server URL. So that's going to be your SharePoint base URL. It's got the server relative URL, and that's the relative URL that comes after your server URL that tells it where the image is. And then you've got um, your ID for your file. And when you run that, you will plug that image into whatever ID row you tell it to, and it'll plug the image in, and you click on the thumbnail, and it'll take you to that image. You get the full resolution right there. So that's how you add an image to a SharePoint list image column. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps.